Only two spots remain for our teams to be able to join Simp and the Cunninghams in the finals in San Francisco. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the playoffs. Welcome to the WGLNA. I'm Joshua Gray. And I'm Randall Holcomb. We're finally to it. We're finally to the playoffs. Season is over. Now, you must win to carry on. If you're eliminated, well, good show. Thanks for thanks for coming, but this is this is where some teams say goodbye. And we'll see you next time in season six. Well, we're going to break down what's happening tonight. First of all, let's take a look at the brackets. Simp and the Cunninghams, because of their placement in the regular season, are automatically going to San Francisco. Simple Tankers in top tier will be our first match tonight, followed by I Love Lamp versus Fear, and those are going to be some awesome matches. Oh, certainly. Of course, then Elevate versus Roulette and Hammer Time versus Simple Tankers. Now, the background between these different teams, their journeys, how they've made it all the way here to the playoffs are sorted and varied. We've seen teams dominate very well, teams that have bounced back from hitting the brink, you could say, of the insurmountable times and these losses with these battles. But then once they'd have a tough match one night, they'd come back get an awesome victory the next night against an, an, an opponent that they were the underdog. I mean, this season has been up and down for every single one of these teams playing tonight. Yeah, and there have been teams that have made it to this playoffs that I don't think I would have predicted to be here at the beginning. Like it's it's it really is rewarding to see teams like I Love Lamp Fear elevate just come out and impress us in and, ways that I would could not have expected. And teams like Simple Tankers and Top Tier who have a background already with their matchup in week seven, Top Tier was able to defeat Simple Tankers five to two. And then they were tied up after the first map, but in the second map, top tier just won three in a row. Yeah, just absolutely turned around when they played. Of course, Prohorovka, a, a map, which I'm expecting to see in their matchup, could just go either way. Both teams have about the same record, about the same chance on attack and defense. It's, it's something I'm looking forward to seeing. Now, Simple Tankers finished with a 9 Victory, one tiebreaker victory, one tiebreaker loss, and four loss career in season five. That puts them in third place, a great spot to be. Now, the difficulty for this team that they had to overcome, the obstacle that was in their way, was how to engage in these brawls without taking too much fire, without taking too much damage. That's what we were seeing in the very beginning of their career in season five. They were able to overcome that obstacle, and Prohorovka, they still hold the title of king on that map. I mean, but this is where it could be broken. We could see top tier come and defeat them, maybe come back. Simple Tankers is a risky team. They play very aggressively. They love to get into fights and brawls and where they perform very well, but there are times when they take a risk and it and it doesn't work out for them. And that could be the game-changing risk at times, especially against a team like Top Tier who have started to turn things around and get momentum. Well, speaking of changes, as you mentioned, Top Tier, they had roster changes. They had some members leave. They also had leadership changes, and that's where we're starting to see a bit of the bounce back coming from Top Tier. But overall in their career for Season 5, they have six wins, two tiebreaker losses, and seven total losses. This is a team that's barely squeaking by, making it into the playoffs in 10th place. They had a rough season. But this change in leadership could have been exactly what they needed in order to make their way back into the good graces of the top six, top four teams when it comes to the WGLNA. Yeah, and there was a time, especially top tier versus hammer time, where it looked like top tier had given up, where they just lost hope, where they said, we can't make it. But something changed. And I think it was that leadership change you were talking about that changed top tier from a team that was on a rapid decline into a team that could turn it around. And is now the biggest underdog that we're seeing playing today. Moving on to our second matchup, it's I Love Lamp versus Fear. Now, they had a recent back-and-forth engagement just last week, and in the tiebreaker, I Love Lamp was able to get the victory. This matchup, though, was so incredibly close and so entertaining that for us to see a rematch so early, you know, or, or so quickly, it kind of begs the question, who could take this? Because it can go either way. It really can, and it comes down, I think, to who did their homework. Because you leave a match that recently, you get to say, all right, here's the mistakes we made, here's what we did right, here's what we did wrong, here's what we should change, here's how should we, we should adapt to this opponent, and here's what we've learned. Both teams have that opportunity the same amount of time, and they're both very driven to accomplish these tests, to do their homework. If they can, it's whoever put in more time and is more dedicated, I think, that will win today. Now, I Love Lamp was a team that took a bit of time in order to get acclimated, I think, just to the Gold League standard of play. But once they did, along with a lot of the other freshman class, I like to call them, 
they have been dominating when they need to, especially against teams like Simp. Both these teams are able to take down Simp, who was struggling at the very end of the season. And the overall tactics and play coming from I Love Lamp is worthy of being top of the freshman class, but barely. Fear is just right behind him when it comes to standings even. I Love Lamp in fifth place, Fear in seventh place. And the overall career of I Love Lamp is eight wins, two tiebreaker wins, one tiebreaker loss, and four losses altogether. This is a team that continues to impress. And even though they were, they even said, hey, commentators, I don't think you really grasp how good of a team we are. We went, well, prove it to us. They're proving it to us. Exactly. They just played OK at the beginning of the season. Didn't look super impressive. I'm talking about both teams. They didn't catch us quite yet. But once it got to midseason, late season, we started seeing wins. But we weren't convinced yet. And I think that's probably because we're used to these veteran teams. We know what to expect. We didn't know what to expect at all from I Love Lamp and Fear. These two teams have really come out and shown us just how good those freshman teams can be. Well, let's talk about Team Fear, formerly Full Potato. Big news for them a couple weeks ago, gaining a sponsor now under a new banner. And with that, maybe comes further anxiety, further pressure to perform, to make it to the finals because now they have more stakes. But Fear, in seventh place, had a great career this season. Seven wins, one tiebreaker win, four tiebreaker losses and then three standard losses. Their defeat against Simp really put them on the map in the same week that I Love Lamp was able to accomplish such a feat. And the in-your-face cliff tactics was a lot of fun to see. But can it get too predictable if, if cliff is not even a map that we're going to play? I mean, I think the map that's going to be key for both of these teams is if we see Muravanka. When we saw Muravanka, we saw I Love Lamp take it 3-1. Then when it switched around to Himmelsdorf, it was Fear who was up and playing much better at the time. I think that it, those results might flip. Both teams putting more work on the maps they lost, and I would expect to see the same maps. I would expect to see Muravanka. It's also the tiebreaker today, which makes it a great map to start on. Our next matchup will be Elevate versus Roulette. Now, Elevate was able to defeat Roulette 5-3 to three the last time that they had met up. In the beginning, they were tied 2-2. Two and two. Then the second map, Elevate took the lead and then was able to win in battle number eight. So a bit of a revenge match for these two teams, even though it's been a while since they faced each other. And you look at where these teams have come from, how long they've been in the league, and where they are today. It's a really great place for Elevate. It, it really is. I think Elevate transforming in the offseason, becoming something a little bit different, a little bit uh, maybe, maybe more refined as they tried to work towards becoming a more coordinated, a little bit more tactical and also kind of reining back some of that aggression. They would just go at their opponent, and that's respectable in the old format because, you know, being able to win on the attack was, was so difficult, and it still can be very difficult. But you see Elevate sometimes do very well on attack, but they're becoming competent on both sides of the battlefield. Now, Elevate is currently in third place. Their career wins was nine with one tiebreaker win, one tiebreaker loss, and four total losses. What a rise from a team that was having ups and downs during the first half of the season, a team formerly known as Bernal Empires that represented the United States, represented North America in the Rumble in the West, and unfortunately couldn't take a battle off any of the European teams. Now under a new banner, under that new sponsorship, they have that anxiety perhaps, they have that challenge, those stakes, but they are living up to that challenge right now. If they could continue to do so into San Francisco, this is a huge momentous push for Team Elevate. Yeah, really it does. It depends on if they can figure out what Roulette is going to try and bring to the battlefield because Roulette's been turning things around. They did not look very strong early season. They looked just midway, not as good as everyone else. But they, after coming back from China and losing a little bit, have very recently started to look much better in a, in a way that makes you hope for them to make it to another season and make it to that top four a second time. Roulette is a team that you kind of secretly hope to do well because it's a bunch of guys that are trying to find their place in this crazy world in the West when you have these these Russian guys that have come over to, uh, to America or to Canada to play. And you could see that in the way that they hung out and expressed themselves as a team. 
it's a really cool thing to, to see. It, it feels like they all have the same background, the same culture, and that translates a bit in their teamwork. But when you have changes to the roster, when you, have, when you were building that camaraderie that's now no longer there because of those changes, it's a tough place to be. It was a rebuilding season we talked about at the beginning of, of this career. And, and you can kind of parallel that to Elevate because both teams saw a big change within their roster and within their identity when the season became, you know, season five. Now, both of these teams have taken just such different routes. It's a matter of where will they end. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll end in the positive for both these teams, and we're going to find out tonight. Hammer Time versus Simply Irresistible is the last matchup that we have in store for you. Hammer Time versus Simply Irresistible in the past, at least this season, was a victory for Hammer Time, but barely. It was a close enough match to take it to a tiebreaker, and in the end, Hammer Time was able to win that tiebreaker. Both these teams, though, are still kind of looking for that place in the sun. Hammer Time's been doing it since Season 2. For Simply Irresistible, this is a team that is joining us for the first time in that freshman class, and now they've made it to the playoffs. Yeah, and they've, they've done so much with so little time. But Hammer Time is a team that seems to have been just kind of chugging along, doing a good job, picking up wins, and playing a slightly different style, actually, from most other teams. But it wasn't so loud and big and pronounced. It was understandable, comprehensive, straightforward, and it worked. And it's gotten them this far. They looked to be reaching for second and first place at one time, but things have turned around on them right at the end of the season. Yeah, they still have not been able to just, just grasp it just yet, but they're getting close. They're getting gosh darn close. And then they're uh, from fifth place, too. It's a good place to be. Their career overall, eight wins, two tiebreaker wins, one tiebreaker loss, and four total losses. Now, Liebestad mentioned they didn't want to get jinxed in the face off. We don't want that to happen either, if, if you're superstitious about those things. Uh, of what kind of they're going to prepare, what, what they talk about, it usually goes the other way, what happens on the battlefield. But Hammer Time, for them right now, I feel that if they don't make it to San Francisco, they could fall into this state of decay where we're not progressing, something's going wrong, we need to have further changes. There, there's maybe that, but there's also consideration of Drynitz, their leader, who, for example, was unable to attend their last match, which didn't go as well as they'd hoped. I think if Drynitz comes back, and, and I expect he'll be here today, so it is the playoffs, we could see Hammer Time really turn around and pick it up. And the last team we're going to talk about is Simply Irresistible. In eighth place, with six wins, two tiebreaker wins, two tiebreaker losses, and five total losses. Randall, the pattern that I would keep seeing from Simply Irresistible is a stopping and starting, stopping and starting, stopping and starting when it would come to the battlefield. If it's how to properly engage in these brawls, how to recover from these strategies they're not maybe familiar with with some of the veteran teams, Simple, Simply Irresistible has been trying to really find their game this season. Yeah, they've, they've just been hot and cold, you know? That's, that's all it is. They show up some days, everything lines up, the stars are in order, the moon is out or something, and, and they can play just fine. Now, they have players on their team that are getting top stats, you know, just wrecking everyone else on the board. So we know Simply Irresistible can be one of those finals teams, if not the champion. They just have a long journey ahead of them. They do. They do. Every single one of these teams definitely deserves to be here. But it's do or die tonight. The winner moves on to Thursday night's matches. The losers go home. Welcome to the playoffs. That does it for our pregame show. We're going to be back with the first matchup of Simple Tankers versus Top Tier after this. Stay tuned. I'm so hey there, I'm Zombie Food. Yo, I'm Romy. Hey guys, I'm Ishik. Hello there, I'm Fat Crow. Hi guys, I'm Unnomable. Baby, I was born this way. <laughs> oh hey, I'm Laps. Welcome to the WGLNA. I was ready to check in with some of the team representatives as we'll have them tonight on the face-offs. But as a reminder, we'd love for you to follow us on Twitter at WGLNA.com as well for our website. Our, the fantasy site is uh, fantasywgl.com as well. You can get a lot of those points. But for social media, you can follow us on Twitter at WGLNA, facebook.com slash WGLNA. Make sure to use that hashtag, WGLNA. So you can find, so that we can find your tweets and put them up on the broadcast. And of course, what we're looking for today, question of the day is, which underdog is your favorite to advance to the finals? Now, I think really the big underdog is top tier, but there are a few other people you can pick out, like Simply Irresistible, if you consider uh, Simple Tankers versus top tier, I mean, obvious, but uh, I Love Lamp Fear, if you want, you can pick Fear, but you could really pick either of those teams as they're in their freshman season. 
So it's it's really a, a task for them to get to the finals. Most definitely. I mean, top tier being in 10th place, barely making it through. Definitely the underdog, I think, overall. But you cannot underestimate any of these teams tonight. Anything can still happen. Well, one of the main teams we're going to take a look at is simply, is excuse me, is Simple Tankers. Simple Tankers knocked out of the entire league, worked the, their way back through the qualifiers, and now they're back in the playoffs. Let's take a look at how they got here. The background of Simple Tankers joining us oh, from the very beginning, oh, yeah. I can remember. Mm -hmm. And they have had their ups and downs. Our strats were so on the line with the aggressiveness that if we messed up, it cost us. This is a pattern that happens a lot of Simple Tankers. They go for this flag cap kind of fast and they get punished for it. But now they're starting to do some punishment themselves. Simple Tankers is kind of coming back. They're veterans, sure. but it seems like this might be a different season for them. So I'm not going to hold them to a lot of what they used to do. This is this is our format. We like to be aggressive. You know, we like to move. So this is this is good for us. Team Crash for us and here. burn. They have definitely improved in their brawls. We've talked about this plenty of times. Brawling is what they do. Simple Tankers now dictating what's happening on the battlefield because of their positioning in the north. This is one more shot, and Simple Tankers will take this. Consequences, the last tank alive for I Love Lamb, and that's it! Simple Tankers, strong strats, even when it was getting a little dicey. I always loved watching Simple Tankers attack because of how swift they are, how choreographed their, mu their movements can be on these different maps. And how decisive they are, where it's a little safer and ways. Photo finish hit again for 270. Yeah, this is also a hold down game, Big Cheese. Oh, Blaze Zero is low. So is Big Cheese, and Blaze Zero is the first to fall in that in skirmish engagement. We're going to be ready for our third matchup tonight. It's going to be Hammer Time versus Simple Tankers. A bit of kind of the WGLA classic since both these teams have been with us for quite some time. Jace with an angry white guy cannot miss. They cannot miss and they get it in. Civil Tankers closes the deal 5-3 to three against Hammer Time and a surprising victory. Yes. And they both will be in the playoffs, so congratulations to both of them and good luck. Uh, Civil Tankers has had quite a journey. Glad that they can make it to the playoffs. Yeah, it really is kind of heartwarming to think about it. When you think about Jay Smooth being the leader of this team since the beginning, he hasn't wavered at all. He hasn't left his post. He's always been there. There have been some changes to top tier Civil Tankers opponents tonight when it comes to their roster. But if there's one thing that hasn't changed, that they're back in the playoffs. Let's take a look at how they got here. Top tier could surprise us and give us a really solid match. It's actually very difficult to judge. Not only are we in week two, where there's a lot of ad adaptation, a lot of learning. This is a new style, so people got to see large samples last week. Our team grew. Uh, we practiced more. We figured out what we did wrong. Top tier looking in top fashion. We really are. This is surprising. Arbus is a team that we would have expected to put uh, up a, a real fight. My team really came together. They played really well. Everyone was very positive about everything. And uh, I keep saying, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. So uh, we're looking to finish strong, and maybe today is the day we start our winning streak for the rest of the season. It's Waffa, Waffa and Target looking for a great shot. He gets it against Bananas. Memory League gets the kill, and that's it. Top tier takes the series five to three. Well played at the end by E6-3 and Callus in that team up match. First up, it's gonna be top tier versus Hammer Time, top tier in 11th place right now, and they suffered their last loss against Timed Out, Timed Out's first win. They lost on a tiebreaker 5-4, and another kind of surprising performance, at least at the beginning of the season. From his tank, he cannot engage, and Big Cheese closes the deal. A real good performance from top tier today. Uh, Hammer Time, in the end, was able to, to close it out, but I don't think they thought it'd be this close against top tier. And there you have it. I don't think anybody really expected to see top tier barely making it through, at least in this playoff, but they're here and they're ready to fight. Yeah, it's it's been a surprising road for them. I had kind of counted them out, you know, weeks ago, but they really have turned it around. We have one team representative standing by. That's Jay Smooth from Simple Tankers. Jay Smooth, good evening. Hey, what's going on? Oh, we're ready to get into that danger zone. Now, this is quite a different scenario compared to your team last season where you got knocked out now you're fighting your way through the playoffs has your team really kicked it into high gear to compete tonight 
Uh, I'm not going to say this is different than a regular season because it's been pressure uh, all regular season. We've been in that mid-tier group. Um, we've been, you know, fourth, twelfth, to tenth, you know, tied for fifth. So it really wasn't until the last uh, to our last week that we really came out and kind of separated ourselves. And even then, I think there's, uh, we finished tied with one other and uh, two teams, one point back. So it's still a tight group. Uh, so it's, it's been a pressure, uh, regular season. So we're ready for tonight. What have you guys been doing to turn around, to ride the line between recklessness and aggression and kind of air towards aggression and away from recklessness? Uh, landed shots. I think that's really what it comes down to and uh and picking our targets we've done a lot better job of focus firing um and when we go back and look at the games we lost we can say like wow it took us forever to get that first tank down or second tank down uh but when it it goes right and when we're on the right side of wrong then then we do things uh we knock those tanks down quick and, and we take the uh we take the advantage jay smith anything you'd like to say to your fans tonight before we start this match I uh, just appreciate you all still coming out. Appreciate the support since uh, the first season. I still have to get a shout out to uh, my team, Wallhacks and Tofu, who really, uh, again, have been responsible for this team uh, this year. Even though I'm the pretty face on the team, they uh, they do a lot of the work behind the scenes. Uh, and our, our our teams come together, and we're we're bad to be uh, glad to be back in the playoffs, and uh, hopefully working our way to Thursday. All right, Jay Smith, always great to see you. Best of luck. We'll see you on the battlefield. I'll see you in the danger zone. Oh, yeah. Right on. Jay Smith is the only person I know who actually looks younger with facial hair. Really? Yeah, he looks younger compared to uh, when he's clean shaven. I can't remember <laughs> a time. <laughs> Little without... known fact about Jay Smith is while he's a football coach, so he knows what it's like to command men on the field, be it a battlefield with tanks or with the pick scan. Also, make sure to place your bets right now, ladies and gentlemen. At the beginning of every single battle, you can place your bets. If you have any questions, ask the people in Twitch chat. Earwaxium, Badco, they're standing by to help you out. Everybody starts with 10 points. If you go to WGLConnect.com, you can find out where you stand when it comes to the betting points because the top performers have an opportunity to take home a nice little prize. Make sure to place those bets. A uh, nice little prize, usually a gold coat or something, right? Usually, usually, yes. Okay. And we'll have a lot of nice prizes too, most likely, for the people that attend our finals happening in San Francisco. We'll get into that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rosters. All right, so we just saw Jay Smooth a moment ago, and looking at top tier, you'll notice that their roster's looking a little short. Now, to remind everyone, earlier in the season, top tier lost a few crucial members and had to pick up a few other players to try and replace them. Top tier in the meantime has really picked things up. So if you're looking for players to follow, I'd look for Coolhammer, E63M6, and Backstaz is someone I'm looking for to turn things around. He kind of doesn't uh, put up the bi biggest stats, but if he shows up, expect good things on an M41 Walker Bulldog. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The first match of the playoffs for Season 5. Battle number one, Simple Tinkers versus Top Tier happening on Prohorovka. Randall, what do we have for tanks? We have a T32, two T69s, two 1390s, two M41 Walker Bulldogs for simple tankers. Top tier. We'll have a T32, a T69, Waffentrager, two RU251s, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. And this, as for top tier, is much like the lineup we see out of Hammer Time sometimes, which will show us a, a very defensive west side play. And now as we look at opening runs, we see Simple Tankers taking a moderately aggressive opening run with Angry White Guy as Cool Hammer and Rude Awakening are going to make their way towards the middle. And actually, that's going to allow for some nice control from top tier. It's going to be very difficult for Simple Tankers to just break through at any point in this, I think, and, and really find a place. It'll take a few minutes. This is a battle I expect will go about to that one and in even a few seconds to be resolved. Uh, they're definitely going to happen, especially with the control we're seeing from either side of the spectrum, from teams that have been dominating on this map to teams that have been trying to copy the pattern, see what works from their opponents, and then do the same thing by putting these T-32s, sometimes the Pershings, into that center section along that Echo 6 area. 
But simple tinkers now are trying to look for that opening when they can pepper a little bit of the enemy team. I kind of like that term. Does a little bit of hit point damage. They can move more effectively. And if they do take a couple shots, they've already punished the enemy team ahead of that. So it still stays even when it comes to hit points. The last thing you want to do is give your opponent any type of edge in the first couple minutes of the battle. Exactly. And simple tankers, if you notice their opening, they've brought that T-32 and two T-69s. You can see that they're going to hold them back in a low ground area so that they don't get spotted, no one gets to see where they are, and when something does happen, they're able to show up and, and, and kind of ambush anyone who would be looking to peek or, for example, any tank that would get spotted, which I think is a big thing Simple Tankers should be looking for early in this game, trying to get some early spotting, vision on a tank or two anywhere on the map, and then just, and just annihilate it. If we could see maybe something in the style that we saw J Smooth scouting on the one line. Now, I'm not saying one line is what we need right now. One line would be suicide, but maybe east side would be a good idea for simple tankers to try and find their way on this map because we're already at four minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, blind fire into E63. That was from Wallhacks. Wallhacks, Wallhacks connected the shot. E63 is going to tell himself, hey, that did not feel good. I'm going to move away from the railroad tracks, get behind some bush cover. And Dazzling will go ahead and take a little bit of up. Oh, another shot towards E63 M6, but he is still behind cover. Dazzling slightly ahead of him in that RU251. And no shots have been close to him yet, but he could be a potential target as well. E63 it, M6 and that tank destroyer does not want to take damage. Yeah, I think it's just blind fire. Wallhacks is taking adva of advantage of the time he has on his side to try and put out some blind fire. This is something that simple tankers have been doing a little bit here and there throughout their matches in the recent weeks, trying to get that early damage. Even if they can't know they got the early damage, they find out in a minute or two, and it makes things easier for them. They also end up with not having that knowledge, try working a little bit harder and assuming they haven't done the damage, which in the end if you know, kind of works tor in their favor. You know, They get into the fight, and surprise, surprise, wow, okay, that guy's at less hit points. This is only easier now. Some slight movement coming from Simple Tankers from the south. While Cool Hammer and Rude Awakening have not moved from their position, no, no reason to. They can still hold, still scout, and still spot any of those tankers moving towards them on either side. And top tier continues to wait as the defenders, they have to either destroy all of Simple Tanker's tanks or wait until time runs out and they will get a victory. Exactly. Now, you can see on the east side of the map, J Smooth and Battle Buddy Angry White Guy are going to begin making their way up the zero line. They found that the east side is mostly open. They haven't spotted anything, and the layout of top tier tells a story of, of a west side defense as opposed to something that's more split. They can send J-Smooth forward, and if they don't get too risky, they can take control of about the Alpha 6-7 crossover. The push. Coming from Simple Tankers, Wallhacks is the first to fall as he gets annihilated by the rest of top tier, but Executus is moving to try to get behind Cool Hammer, and on the move he gets the kill. Rude Awakening will be targeted, but Pub Whisper goes down. Yeah, the timing is so off right now. They've sent in the 1390s too early. The M41s are only going to get into the backfield right now and begin causing havoc. I think the Simple Tankers might lose a lot of momentum, but give them a chance, and if those M41s do their job, this could get back into their favor, or at least even out. SPG Master and Baxtazo are punishing those tanks up to the north. Rude Awakening takes another hit for 168. He fires towards Executus. That fire does not connect. That shot does not connect. Executus is now halfway through loading, and Jason is going to move in, and Zakum gets the kill from the other side of the small village next to the railroad tracks. There's Tofu Smurf and Zaku moving in to get those cleanup shots. Three tanks remain now for top tier with two minutes left. Civil tankers can either get on the eastern flag cap or chase down those tanks, but they have to make a decision right now. And it looks like they're going to go for that eastern flag cap. Instead of trying to go for fast tanks, which could potentially outrun them and play for time, they're going to send, it looks like, their light tanks onto the cap. Of course, they have less health and keep the T-69s who have reasonable burst to try and hold them off. But I'm waiting to see, can top tier send some kind of uh, suicide M41 in to reset enough just at the right time so that simple takers cannot possibly cap. They would have to get all the kills. Now, Backstess, Memory Leaker moving in. You can see SBG Master to the very far north is attempting to make his way in as well. 
10 Time seconds left. Control. Top tier trying to get close. Tofu Smurf does not get the track shot against Backstaz. He misses a shot on the move. Memory Leak and Backstaz have got to move in now. Three seconds remain on the base cap. Two more seconds. Backstaz fires towards Tofu Smurf. Tofu gets a direct hit. And base has been captured. Simple Tangers puts the first point on the board here in the playoffs. There we go. I, that was one of those decisions that we are talking about uh, in the face-off, or rather the interview, which is, are we going to see that reckless simple tankers, or are we going to see that aggressive simple tankers? When I looked at that attack, and I looked at the timing, it works out because simple tankers just makes their shots count. They make the connections, and that's what counts, and I think that was a, a point that J Smooth was raising earlier. It was. But the timing, I, I saw J Smooth and Angry White Guy coming in, and they're 10, 20 seconds away when the fight has started elsewhere, and, and that's not as many guns on target as you would like. So, Simple Tanker's really riding a fine line in this first battle. There were a couple missed shots here and there, but we have to dismiss, well, we don't necessarily have to dismiss them, but we can categorize them into the, well, you were on the move in a 1390, so RNG is going to be working against you. I loved what Simple Tankers was able to do here. I totally recognize that they're the lateness on the other side of the map, and that's what can destroy a lesser team. And we've seen that happen about five or six times in the last two weeks where teams start to engage in whatever type of, of strategy they're trying to implement by having uh, two different three-man teams in a pincer attack attacking at the wrong time. And you've got to lay out the timings correctly. Now, I, I do have to entertain the counterpoint to it, which is that late timing allows for the M41s to attack on the softer tanks that are firing from the back, that Waffentrager especially, and take it out before it has a chance, while it's distracted, I should say, with tanks to the south, and while the rest of the team is as well, allowing for the M41s to get in deeper into enemy territory and also to take out more crucial tanks. So there's a, there's there are counterpoints to weigh. It's all a matter of success, though. Let's move to battle number two as Simple Tankers continues on Prohorovka as the king, but top tier is ready to maybe dethrone Simple Tankers here in battle two. What do we have for tanks? Well, we have two T69s, two 1390s, RU251, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. That's Simple Tankers who are in the red attacking blue, top tier, defending, T32, Pershing, Waffentrager, 1390, two RU251s, and a 5916. So a switch up for this one on both sides. We're dropping the T32 from Simple Tankers in favor of some more mobility. And from top tier, we're going to beef it up a little bit. And as you can tell, just at the beginning, opening scout run from Angry White Guy could have been the difference of a lot of hit points in the first few seconds. As you can see, Simple Tankers, 7,900, and Top Tier's 8,100. Little bit of a difference, but it can go a long way if Top Tier is able to play their cards right. Memory Leak and Root Awakening are in the center of the map. Cool Hammer's gonna be joining them soon. The rest are to the north. Simple Tankers spread out. Pub Whisper and Wall Hacks over on the one line. And we wait, we wait for Top Tier to stay in their positions for Simple Tankers to come attack them to try to cut through the defenses here of top tier, which on Prohorovka is easier than compared to, let's say, Himmelsdorf. Yeah, definitely that. But I wanted to jump onto the subject of what top tier's play style reminds me of, and that's Himmel and that's Hammer Time. Hammer Time's strategy of bringing that Waffentrager and putting it in Alpha 6, it, it just, I can't help but think, that's such a, a Hammer Time thing to do. And... And it kind of makes me think, is that the style that we're going to see top tier go towards? Or is that simply a good strategy that top tier also would like to enact? Well, at least I'd try it twice, at least. First, maybe a fluke why it didn't work. But at the second time, that doesn't work as well. It's time to change it up. Yeah, and I have to note that the Waffentrager is not going to bring the 150. It's going to bring the mouse cannon, a little smaller, faster firing, more accurate at range. And uh, I'd, I'd say more reliable in general. But that's, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a topic for debate of course, being what would you rather have? Memory Leak still continuing on the scouting run. He's the only tank that is spotted. Nobody is spotted on simple tankers, and no other tank on top tier has been seen, uh, recently at least. Now, what's Root Awakening up to? I see a little motion mostly happening around that Echo 5-6 area, middle of the map. Is top tier trying to jockey for some kind of an early lead so that they don't get the battle dictated to them? Or jockeying for movement at least telling simple tankers that hey we're in different positions we're moving our tanks you're gonna have to guess where we're at simple tankers can think well he's moving in the same circle we're seeing him in the same pattern of every five seconds so it looks like he's not going anywhere um but it, it's it's waiting i think top tier is circling and waiting almost like a shark circling and waiting for its prey to kind of come to them or to start to 
to relax before the shark strikes. <laughs> That's, that's maybe one way. Of course, there's no blood in the water yet. No. So once that happens, which J-Smooth might be able to do that, he's all the way in Foxtrot Zero. And with spotting happening in Echo 5-6, the middle of the map area, which center control is, is granted, if he's able to get a few shells into Root Awakening, Cool Hammer, or Memory Leak, that could be the moment at which top tier is forced to back off, knowing that they don't have control of the East. Or maybe they even posture up and try and take control of the East. It's... It's a matter of those actions, reactions. If we can find the weak point, we can see that Simple Tankers is now in transition, which tells me they're going to go for that same east side attack, or at least a similar one. But they'll also take that safe route. Angry White Guy is going to go up and around, take a whole zero line, instead of trying to maybe cut corners, which is an option he has. He could decide, I'm not going to go up and over the hill. I'm just going to go directly towards Echo 9. Although, wait, uh, wait, huh? Is he going to cut a corner? Are we going to see simple tankers? This is an important decision, where Angry White Guy goes, because that that's where we can see errors, that's where we can see openings made, that's where we can see tanks lost, that's where we can see top tier figure out what's going on. I think we're starting to see the crews of Angry White Guy and Executives past the small lake, now heading towards the riverbed, or at least through the village on the east, where Jay Smooth went across the hillside, and now simple tankers they has know. to set up their attack. They know. I think, I think they know, because... You can see in the middle of the map, Memory Leak making scout runs when he doesn't see anything, when he doesn't see that M41, he knows he's probably up to something somewhere else. He's been gone for far too long. He hasn't spotted the middle. Simple Tankers hasn't done that. And now they get the vision that they were looking for. Jay Smooth, Angry YK, and Executus are all headed towards Alpha 6 so that they can hold off top tier from that cap. In the meantime, you do have the rest of the group engaging to the south. And this is going to be the same style strategy, but they get SPG Master all the way in the north first. And now they move on to E63M6. Jay Smooth is out in front, and they're trying to burst him down. It'll take one more shell from Angry White Guy, and now they have control of the north. Wallhacks and Pub Whisperer continue to bounce back and forth between the heavier tanks in the center. Cool Hammer Root Awakening are going to take a lot of shells, and both top tier and simple tankers know that. So these 1390s have to be very cautious with when they're expelling their shots because of what's happening to the north. To where Executus and Angry White Guy looks like they have a handle on things. Bax Taz is still way far away and is not engaged yet in brawling mode. But Cool Hammer and Root Awakening are the last tanks that remain still in the fight until Backstaz begins the engagement. Cool Hammer falls. Zakum and Tofu Smurf ready to take down Root Awakening. He's the next one to go. All that remains is Backstaz with a minute and 26 seconds left on the battle clock. Ah, oh, and Backstaz barely unable to finish off Executus. He will be reloaded shortly, able to maybe get that kill. Yes, he does. And he's going to now have to just well, try and take on the rest, but that's... Oh, uh, big shot from Wallhacks. One more, and Backstaz is gone. Simple Tinkers now leads the series 2-0, to zero, as we'll flip sides, and Simple Tinkers will then be on the defense, while Top Tier will have to attack. And this is where I think Top Tier has a chance. Simple Tinkers on attack. I think this is one of the stronger teams that we could pick out of our playoffs that will perform well on attack. Defense, Simple Tinkers, it's, it's not quite there because they're going to try the same things they do on attack on defense they're still going to be aggressive they're still going to try and set tempo they're still going to try strategies like this which i really do love because you have an up and over in the north but the timing's different you can see that the focus is also different from simple tankers they had the opportunity to spot some more sensitive tanks with higher damage potentials focus them down and you got to give it to them they made their shots count too not a lot of missed shots in the beginning of this engagement which completely threw things into simple tankers favor and that simple tankers favor is going to continue with this momentum but the thing that you hit though is defense for simple tankers it's not necessarily like they're not accustomed to it but hanging back and waiting for the enemy has never really gone in favor of simple tankers or for a lot of teams that start to get pigeonholed in the same type of tactics. It's not their style. This is back to like season two, season three, where it's them and googly bobbers that would love to attack and even Bernal Empires at the time would love to attack. And it would start to get a little bit noticeable at times. And I remember that series with Hammer Time and Bernal Empires where Bernal Empires had it, but they kept on the attack instead of waiting and defending. And so Hammer Time was able to punish him accordingly. These two teams, I mean, still looking at this map, what Sybil Tankers was able to accomplish in the first two battles was fantastic. But now it's top tier's card to play on the attack. Let's see what they're able to do here in battle number three. Randall, what do we have for tanks? All right, Sybil Tankers in the red now defending two T-32s. 
four RU251s and a T37. That's Kraft Lawrence in that. Against top tiers, two T32, three RU251s and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. Very minor difference here, although you can also say it's the opposite. You can say M41s mean a lot. Great tanks, high damage potential, and a short burst against that T37. But Civil Tankers is going to have an extra tier 8. And the way the tip points are going to work out, almost, almost the same with 8,580 versus 8,520. Means almost nothing, right? It's, it's really a very small difference. It's a matter of how you play with that extra tier 8 and how you play with those two M41s. There's that southern waiting section here coming from top tier, but I don't know what they're waiting for. You know what they're waiting for? They're waiting for simple tankers up and over. simple tankers? They, everyone knows. Simple tankers doesn't care if it's attack or defense. They will do what, what they want. They will attack if it's on defense, because guess what? That's what they want to do. They're not going to say, we're on defense, therefore we defend. They're going to say, oh, we're on defensive side? Here's how we're going to attack, or here's how we're going to defend. It's, it's merely a condition. You know, you really have just a few other things to worry about as simple tankers when you're defending. But you're still going to make that opening setup. You're still going to set up and do as you want. And when a few minutes pass, simple tankers might just start rolling out and trying to dictate the pace of the battle to top tier and slow them down. Keep them away from the cap. Don't allow them to maneuver as they please. Really just harass them at every single turn. That's what you want to do as simple tankers, especially with the T32 lineup with all of these RU251s. With that much mobility and firepower that you can just send anywhere on the map in just a few seconds, follow that up with a T37 just, just for a little bit of flavor, you're going to be able to react to anything and I expect even dictate to your opponent. And now, as blind fire's coming in towards the Alpha 6 hill, that crossover point, you're gonna see simple tankers getting off of that high ground. They don't wanna take blind fire. They understand their opponent is able to deliver that kind of potential damage the same way they were attempting to do that by blind firing in battle number one. They're just getting a little bit of their own medicine here. So they're going to have to react to this and work around this situation in which they've been able to impose on their opponent, but do they have the experience in taking that kind of punishment? Yeah, how to shift, how to move, how to avoid those shots, how to not take damage, how to be able to know when to engage, where to engage, who's going to lead first. And all those things seem almost instantaneous when we see it right here in front of our eyes, but every single movement, every single shot is a decision. It could be a split-second decision, but it's based on something. It's based on to accomplish something, and the teams that have the more strategic layers and levels to what they bring to the battlefield, the more adaptable they can be. Top tier now has 14 minutes and 13 seconds on the attacking side to either destroy all of Simple Tanker's tanks or to capture a flag cap, waiting on them to pull the trigger, waiting on them to push forward, and the two tanks that are furthest north a rude awakening and cool hammer. Simple tankers doesn't have to engage. They're waiting for top tier to make the first move. Exactly. And if you take a look at the layout that you see from top tier currently, you can see that a majority of their group are all in the south, which makes me think we're going to see that east side as a major pushing point, as Memory League SPG, Dazzling E63, all move north, take control of the east, much in the same way we saw from simple tankers, and then we'll see how things kind of play out from there. Top tier now inching closer. Rude Awakening fired a shot. T32, he bounces one, and Angry White Guy misses a shot. And Rude Awakening bounces a shot off Angry White Guy. I mean, T32s, what are you going to do, you know? Yeah, that's a bit of the wait until somebody is able to get a penetrating shot either in the commander's hatch or in the hole, and Angry White Guy takes hit for 372. Right in the commander's hatch, just you called it. And in a moment, it happened. Now, right into Zakum as well. His commander happened. He does not have the high ground. They're not elevated higher than Rude Awakening Cool Hammers. So Simple Tankers T32s are going to start taking more damage simply based on that. But you have to take into account that there are some RU251s that have been supporting these guys. Although, wait, oh gosh, this could not work out. This might go poorly. Look at Pub Whisperer, Craft Lawrence, and Executus. Three tanks that I think, I, I think Civil Tankers would really benefit from having further to the east so that they well, can react immediately. Look at the way yeah, top tier is. By, by the time they've scouted a couple, a bit of this top tier movement, if they scout one or two more tanks, they've got to move those northern tanks over to engage because if not, it's going to be a total overmatch on top tier's side, both in the center and up top. Maybe if they move those tanks up top, if they decide to go over the center, there could be enough support fire. Could, but the distance is certainly a factor you have to think about, which means as you get greater distances, your accuracy begins to fall off. You can't guarantee connections like you could 
if you were right there in the fight. And I think simple tankers would prefer to be in a brawl if it were up to them. Well, now top tier has made their moves on the flag cap, and there's 36 seconds left to go. Well, now even less at 23. Simple tankers have taken way too long to move. Now 18 seconds. Sakum and angry white guy in the center. Now those northern tanks are starting to move over. Bit of a reset has happened. They need to get another one as Tofu Surf from up top is trying to look over towards that flag cap. And here's the engagement happening against Cool Ham and Root Awakening. And they're getting torn up already. The overmatch is massive on the side of Seven Simple Tankers. Seven seconds left. Simple Tankers now moving past Cool Hammer. They need to get the reset and they do. Cool Hammer's one shot away. Crap Lawrence cleans that up. And Simple Tankers are now moving in against the continually deflated top tier tanks on that flag cap. They move back. Executives falls. Zaku needs a good shot. He gets it. Pub Whisper turns around the corner. And here comes SPG Master hoping to clean up a couple of these tanks that have taken significant damage. We but need to see the focus fire. It. It's you're talk, We talked about this earlier. Jay Smooth brought it up. It's being spread across multiple tanks, and that's where simple tankers are starting to lose their momentum in this. Now, top tier is losing health now. Focus fire is coming in, and shots are landed. But your simple tankers almost, for a moment, were beginning to just fall right into that same spot, right back to where top tier could bring this back. But now, a moment later, they have brought that back up. They've gotten their focus fire, and it's now going completely their way. Yeah, if Wallhax is pushing forward, an angry white guy from a distance takes down Backstabs. But it's very true. You look at the avenue of approach from that center section. They're focusing on the T-32s, and then they go up and over. It's almost the the priority list is shifting kind of back and forth, but the top of that list was the flag cap, and they got the reset. Exactly. I have to give it to them. They also were able to deal with these T-32s very effectively. You're seeing how damage is being done. T-32s don't stand a chance. The right tanks are staying behind to deal with Cool Hammer. Got to give it to Kraft Lawrence, T-37, able to get that little bit of damage that was necessary. But then when it comes to the cap, they spread damage at the beginning. Executives moves in, but where's the rest of the team? The rest of the team does not have guns on target. That is Executives going in too soon, maybe called to go in too soon. The rest of the team may be kind of hobbled behind them. Hobbled being uh, when when you tell someone to do something, and of course they're unable to do it as quickly, and so they make <laughs> mistakes and they yeah. and they move slower because they they weren't prepared. So it it could be a mistake there. It could be a minor thing. It really could have just been a get in there. I don't care. Get into this fight and stop this cat. That could have been the call. It makes sense that that could be the call because we saw how close the timing was. It was seconds away from victory for top tier. But with three in a row now from Simple Tankers, top tier on Pro Rovka, I, I, I don't think they can pick one up. It's not looking good. These are becoming one-sided. It looks like there's moments top tier could take advantage of, but they're unable to seize those. Simple Tankers has too much momentum and they're dictating far too much to their opponent. And with three points already on the board, Simple Tankers is two battles away from closing this series and moving on to Thursday night, which is the final step before they can make it to San Francisco. They're taking this very seriously. Both teams are. But the type of decision-making comes from, from simple tankers of don't attack. Wait for top tier to come to us. That's not the right decision to make every single time. But sometimes it is. And that was that moment where I went, okay, simple tankers, you're playing this at the right pace now what are you going to do in, in, in Battle 4? Top tier is starting to become more desperate, and desperation brings innovation. And let's see what top tier is able to do here in Battle 4. What do we have for tanks? All right, we've got a 1390, four RU251s, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs for simple tankers, the red team defending. Attacking top tier for their final time on Pro Arovka. Two T32s, an Object 416, two RU251s, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs. So maybe a little desperation. Last time they brought Object 416s, in maths, uh, that, that didn't work too well. Didn't work out so well. Oh, this opening move, though. Okay, Simple Tankers is bringing out the classic up and over, blitz towards a tank. But what happens when they don't find anything? What happens when nothing's there? Well, that information gathering will be even more crucial. However, it could put them in a really bad position from the high ground, which is top tier's priority with these light moving tanks to fire down upon Simple Tankers. Oh, and a little blind fire maybe going. And oh, there's a hit on Rude, Rude Awakening 3, 237. Not bad. They they have a condition set for when nothing's there. You have to give it to Simple Tankers. That is that is a follow-up. Understanding where your opponent could be, timings, and then going for it. Angry White Guy even goes up and over. They've recognized, okay, we don't see them at all. There's chances are they're not going to be over here. We've calculated, or at least predicted, that... 
if they're not here, they'll be going east. Yeah, they have It'll to be go full east. In. They have and to. And Angry White Guy is already behind the T-32s. This is such an opportunity for simple tankers. They can do so much with this information. Cool Hammer and Rude Awakening, these T-32s, it, it's going to take them a minute or two to get into the proper position to deal with what Simple Tankers is going to be able to dish out. Simple Tankers has, has so much time to set up perfectly and deny top tier advantages, or with this lighter lineup, they, they can of course maybe take a, a slightly safer route considering their lesser armor and hit points to, to try and sneak in damage where they can, or at least be able to prepare a stronger reaction. One would hope it's Simple Tankers now sending Executives to the north and the rest are waiting. They're close to the railroad tracks except for Pub Whisperer and Unknown One. I mean, Top Tier's got to be feeling a lot of pressure right now. Oh, they, of course. Angry White Guy was behind their lines so quickly that if, if you're the commander, you're, you realize that your opponent is a step ahead of you. They know what you're up to and they have the... They've already executed in such a way that your T-32s aren't even in position, and 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 you're having to account for the fact that you could be now attacked at any moment. Executus and Wallhax both took hits a couple seconds ago. Yeah, they've, they've been exposed. There's Wallhax hit again, and there's oh. no traded fire going against these tanks in the center. Again, the, the power of having these tanks in the center of the map is displayed again. And, and that's why you have T-32s. You can see Simple Tankers decided let's bring a highly mobile lineup. It's working against them in some respects. I think they need to give a little more distance and respect to top tier and the heavier lineup that they brought. The potential for damage with that Object 416, two T-32s, means you have armor, and the Object 416 is going to follow that up, and it's brutal, which means J-Smooth is going to be key in this situation. So are Pub Whisperer and Angry White Guy. As they get up on the high ground so they can cover the cap, Simple Tankers are going to go for some spotting, which... It's going to have to come in pretty soon because there are a lot of tanks piling onto the cap. Yeah, they all piled over in the Charlie Bravo 3 section right now, and that's going to mean time. Time is going to take for them to get over in this position. But look at these tanks now moving in from the east side up on the hill. They could get a couple shots on Backstaz and E63M6, but they have to do it now. 15 seconds left in order for top tier to get the flag cap. And who is it on the flag cap? Backstaz, E63M6 looking north. Just two tanks. 10 now, seconds. Angry White Guy's moving in. Looks like some spotting might happen. E63 is going to be spotted. Everything's spotted. They will begin taking fire. Back There's says. a reset. And he's going to get hit again. They're going to focus him down, I guess, this time. Four shots into him. Remove that tank from the cap. Angry white guy or someone else can deal with the object 416, which has already racked up enough cap points to the point where you've got only 48 seconds left. E63M6 continues to stay on the flag cap to continue the pressure. Unknown one at about half health. Takes a number of hits that are not being traded back from Simple Tankers. Memory Leak does fall. That's two tanks down for top tier. And now, by the way, G Smooth, who was in the background, dealing as much damage as he could, has fallen into a low ground, keeping him out of the fight for a while on the high ground. We've got, that was... Eight seconds left published. on the base cap. And E63M6 been sitting there the entire time. No resets again his tank. Angry White Guy's on the way in. Three seconds. He could get the reset. Two more seconds. One more second. He zeroes. He fires, he gets the oh, hit. Oh, barely. Barely gets the hit. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just a moment longer, and that's that's completely over. But Angry White Guy was already in the backfield, and Simple Tankers are going to begin swarming in and out and around, trying to deal with these tanks. This is an incredibly difficult situation to coordinate on any team for any level of play. This is absolutely amazing if they can come out of this with good focus fire. Well, the amount of hit points is dwindling quickly for Simple Tankers, but so... F it's the same for top tier, though. Top tier is down to two tanks remaining on the battlefield. With a minute and 50 seconds, se 57 seconds, Civil Tankers was able to dodge a number of those shots, but to stay alive. Two more tanks do fall as Cool Hammer and E63M6 are trying to stick together, but Cool Hammer's taking some long range fire. And Cool Hammer's now the last tank left alive. Angry White Guy is not loaded yet, but he wants to be. He's waiting for that final shot against Cool Hammer. He is loaded, and he gets it on the move. And Civil Tankers now leads. 4 to 0 against top tier, one battle away, and the next map will be Steps. You know, this is a huge turnaround, huge improvement for Simple Tankers. Now, last time these two teams played, Prohorovka was the first map. And on that time, it went 2 and 2, back and forth, back and forth. Simple Tankers looked good, top tier looked okay, but it wasn't this level yet. No one had come this far in the meta. And now as things have kind of shifted, you're seeing Simple Tankers 
the timing, the it's 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 not just what they're doing, it's how and when they're executing, which is very impressive to me. And that's that's really what I'm enjoying about watching Simple Tankers. Top tier just can't keep up. Simple Tankers has done so much more work to prepare for this map. They they truly are right now the kings of Prohorovka. And around that 230 mark was one of the most crucial moments because Simple Tankers, you look at the amount of tanks that are still taking damage, still none of them had been destroyed, and then top tier loses two tanks. So that's the trade-off of firepower versus hit points, right? You destroy those tanks first, you're not going to take the same amount of damage per minute coming from the opposite teams. Your tanks stay alive, that can progress, and boom, you win the battle. Focus fire is what is so prevalent from Simple Tankers in those moments, and that's why they were able to win, even though they were taking a lot of damage later on. Yeah, I think that they, they had to pay that kind of damage. They had a lighter lineup. They couldn't afford to really have an anchor to, to hold those T-32s or any other tank's attention so that they could begin doing maneuvers. They took a riskier play. And you can see how each individual player was executing on his own. You cannot, as one person, coordinate that. There's no way Jay Smooth is making the call or Wallhacks is making the call to, for every single player to move as, as they did. This is a kind of a play where you trust every single one member of the team to work together, and, and you saw it happen. While uh, Angry White Guy stepping up at the right time to get the reset because no one else could, and it <laughs> barely, barely, barely in time. Barely, barely made it. One battle away is Sybil Tankers from moving on into the playoffs on Thursday. Top tier has to fight all the way through four battles just to get to the tiebreaker here in battle number five on steps. Randall, what do we have for tanks? All right. For what could be the last battle, T32 Pershing, 1390, two RU251s, and two M41 Walker Bulldogs for simple tankers in the red. Top tier, blue, T32 Pershing, 1390, two RU251s, two M41 Walker Bulldogs. It's a mirror matchup, Josh. One that we saw a couple times in season five, but not often. We no. saw a lot more mirror matchups in Season 4, for sure. Certainly. Now, with a lot more options on the table, there's a little bit more variation that you can bring in here and there. Definitely, definitely shows. But when you do see a mirror matchup, it is it is a little bit of a, a nostalgic for me. Oh, for sure. Because it was a little while where we saw a lot of mirror matchups. Rude Awakening and Cool Hammer are taking the no man's road, while the rest of top tier head towards the flag cap to the west. And what does Simple Tankers have to deal with this? They've got only Zakum as the farthest northwest tank, and he's not even looking at the proper area on the cap. Top tier is poised right now to begin their cap fast and get solid coverage without any real interference from Simple Tankers. Their attention is, is focused on the south currently. It will shift a little bit to the north in a few moments, but for the most part, it looks like only the T-32 Zakum is going to be in a position to defend the cap, and he cannot spot far enough. His his view range is not far enough to find memory leak on the cap. He's going to have to just guess and hope that he's able to get the hit. There's an educated guess in here. He does fire just over memory leak, but it might as well have been a mile away. More long-range shots. Raining towards the team, trying to attack, trying to get that flag cap top tier. Simple tankers from a distance and looking Jay for those tanks. Angry white guy looks like he's going to go up and over to begin trying to scout the cap. And what is the interference from top tier? Have they prepared for this is the big question. You can see from their coverage that it's only okay. They're not prepared to stop angry white guy. He gets the spotting, memory leak takes fire, and that's going to be a big reset delaying top tier's ability to, to pressure simple tankers into a bad situation. They've only had to put Angry White Guy out there, and he's taken no fire for it, received no punishment, and only, actually, Zakum has taken yeah, a little bit. Yeah, Zakum got, got hit twice, at least in that engagement. A couple more shots went towards Memory Leak. They did not connect. And now a little bit more fire coming from simple tankers here towards the top tier tanks. And what are, is going to be the reaction? I'm seeing that Pub Whisperer is very close to the south. And he, he could begin working around for some kind of a flank, something to disrupt top tier and whatever they've got in store. Jay Smooth as well is going to be heading south. And that tells of Simple Tanker's intention to bring in a flank when top tier attempts to maybe pressure the cap again or push up and take more ground or even retreat. We could see some kind of ambush. A, a full retreat might not work out very well for Simple Tanker's. 
unless it happens maybe towards the end where it can delay long enough for simple tankers to get a defense win. And that delay, that time manipulation, that time control can really go to both teams depending on what they want to execute. But when that clock strikes zero, simple tankers will move on to the next round of the playoffs on Thursday. Angry White Guy gets hit to the side. That's the final shell from SPG Master. He's in, what is he? SPG Master's in M41 Walker Bulldog, so. Ooh, Jay Smooth with a long range shot is able to hit Rude Awakening. And Jay Smooth will be on the reload. It's not bad, although that will prompt E63 M6 and Memory League to head south, which at the same time, Dazzling and Backstaz are heading along the north. So that tells, the top tier is gonna go up and over. They, they're predicting that Simple Tankers is spread out and that they could jump on a focus point and overwhelm their opponent. When you have an equal force, generally you try and group up as best you can so that you're ready for whatever attack comes. Of course, then you get layers and layers of, of tactics, but the fight is about to begin. SPG Master leads the way, dazzling right with him, and they're going to go up, over, and focus on Zakum, who does not have any real support on him right now. Oh, wait a second, though. Here comes Simple Tankers ready to support. Zakum's going to hold, and Dazzling will be targeted first. Dazzling's one shot away from going down, and next is SPG Master. He moves in and takes down Zakum, and there goes Angry Waikai. Executus, however, is moving in, trying to stop the one tank that can continue to do damage, and he gets it. Executus, however, is going to get peppered from both sides, from the, 50, uh, the 13 90 and the M41 Bulldog, but J Smooth now moving quickly to try to get away from E63 M6. Pub Whisper moves in to get the kill. Backstabs goes down. It's four against three. J Smooth trying to rock a couple more shots of damage before he falls. Rude Awakening's ready to get the shot and he gets it. It's three against two. Cool Hammer and Rude Awakening on the surround. Tofu Swerve with a great shot on the side for 242. Wallhacks pushes in. Great focus fire. Tofu Swerve barely left Not alive. Not going to make that shell. He might go down for it. Rude Awakening is going to be reloaded first, but oh, he Rude misses, misses it. Oh, Rude misses it. Tofu Swerve gets the shot. Cool Hammer fires back for the kill. Pub Whisper still on the reload. Wallhacks on the reload as well. And Simple Tankers has a minute and 45 seconds to either destroy this tank or hold. Pub Whisper now. Track shot, waiting for the reload. Big shot from Wallhacks. Pub Whisper almost reloaded. Wallhacks almost reloaded. And here comes Pub Whisper on the side. Uh, beautiful track shot right there to slow him down. Keep Cool Hammer right where he wants him. And it's that's it. And that's it. Simple Tankers does it. Simple Tankers does it. Five to zero against top tier. And they're moving on to Thursday. They will face the winner of I Love Lamp versus Fear. All right, so just at the end of this, we have to point out some of the top players. I was looking at Angry White Guy. Previous battle, battle number four, top damage dealer over 2K. This time, wall hacks. He has 2,557. Standout players, J Smooth. You've seen him execute perfectly on battles in the early parts of this series. I think Simple Tankers was on top. You can tell their strategy was, ah, gosh, it was it, it was so notch. beautiful. It was top notch. It was notch beautiful, strategy. but it was it was flexible. It it set the tempo. It wasn't rock hard stone walls that you couldn't break through. It was the ability to I I think you like to bring this one flow like water kind of yep. a thing. That's uh Bruce Lee. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And to have those kind of adjustments and flexibility is fantastic because it makes you more acclimated to what the enemy brings. And Simple Tankers is going to have to definitely be acclimated to whatever happens <laughs> between Fear and I Love Lamp and then further on against possibly Simp or the Cunningham. So good show to Simple Tankers. Congratulations. However, you're not there yet. We'll see you Thursday night. And for top tier, you had some trouble this season. You were starting to turn things around. We look forward to watching your career continue to unfold in Season 6. That does it for our first matchup. We're going to get ready for I Love Lamp versus Fear after this. Stay tuned.